Hey guys, how's it going? Jared Garneau here. Today is Friday, August 12th, 2022. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today we are going to go over how to play a uh, progression that uses a series of secondary dominants. If that sounds confusing at all, just stick around. I'll explain that uh, pretty soon. So um, yeah, so I just want to say thank you guys that are continuing to subscribe and like and comment on my videos. I know I say that at the beginning of every video, but I truly appreciate all the support. I mean, my subscribers are increasing, which is great to see. And it's really thanks to you guys that continue to like and follow my videos and all that good stuff and everything I do on um, so my social media pages. So thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. But um yeah, today's topic, we are talking about how to play over a common turnaround uh, used at the end of blues progression. So uh, today's example, you can hear at the end of uh, like a tune like Someday After a While by Freddie King. Um, so I forget the exact progression of the tune, but at the end of it, he does um, this thing where I believe it's in the key of F. But um, today we're going to talk about in the key of um, C. <laughs> Just because uh, when we're talking about theories, um, putting it in the key of C is the easiest way to understand that. Um, just because C has no naturally occurring sharps or flats when we're talking about theory. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to be playing in the key of C. So the progression would be C. And we're going to use all um, dominant seven chords, by the way. So for right now, I'm just going to use this uh, shape right here. So I'm in open E, by the way, for you guys that um, are new to the channel, don't know. But um, part of my playing revolves around uh, playing in open E and playing the chords in that context. I mean, I can play in standard and um, for live gigs, sometimes I'll play in standard. But um, my overall style is an open E. So um, yeah. So how we play a dominant seven chord on guitar is on an opening anyways, is on the sixth string, we're playing the eighth fret, that's our root. And that's our root C. And then on the, we're gonna skip the fifth string and mute it. So I just mute it by uh, just lightly touching it with my middle finger. And then with my index finger, I'm playing the sixth fret on the fourth string. That's my flat seven B flat. So if I go through the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B is my seventh. If I flat that to make it B flat, I get my flat seven. So that's where that comes from. And then up top here, I have um, E, which is my major third. So again, if I go through the C scale, C, D, E, then um, I can also add my G up top here, which I'm actually not going to in this case, um, just because I kind of I like the sound. Actually, I think for my loop pedal, I did add the G. So with or without it, um, when we're talking about comping for um, a jazz and blues setting, the fifth and the chord, which is G in this case, is um, harmonically neutral in most cases, so it's really not necessary to add. In fact, um, depending on the context and how many instruments there are, um, it can actually get in the way of the overall um, mix of the band and what you're going for. So it really all depends. I think for my loop pedal, I did um, add that fifth up top just to fill out the sound a little bit more since, you know, it's just my rhythm guitar. But anyways, that's our dominant chord, so C7. So in terms of um, harmony, each chord is going to be its own dominant chord, and, um, which is common in blue setting. So the next chord after that, we're going to do uh, A7, which if we're talking about naturally occurring uh, chords in a blue setting, that would usually be A minor. But what we're doing in this case is we're um, setting up the third chord, which in this case is D7, with its own dominant chord uh, that pre precedes it. So um, it goes along with the rule that you can precede any chord with its own dominant chord. That's a very common um, way of thinking in jazz. So. 
You can play this A7 chord, which is its dominant chord that sets uh, up the next chord, which is D7, which is also not naturally occurring in uh, C major. Normally that would be a D minor, but that's setting itself up for the final chord, which is G7, because D7 would be the five chord of G7. So what we're doing is actually setting up a series of two secondary dominants that finally resolves to our G7. So we're starting with our root chord, which is C7, a secondary dominant A7, which is um, setting itself up to go to D7, because A7 is the five chord of D, and then D7 is the five chord of G. So it's really like kind of like a, a chain reaction, of chords that just um, set each other up for the next chord. It's very common um, jazz, you hear it in like rhythm changes, that's essentially what that is. I mean, I think this would be a little bit different or kind of on its own shelf, but very similar idea where um, a lot of people look at just like rhythm changes as just, you know, setting up um, as, you know, just a series of dominant chords. Um, or secondary dominant chords, rather. So, yeah, that's the chord uh, progression. So we have C, A7, then D7, G7. Then uh, in the actual tune, you would go to F7, and back to C7, C7 tripping over my words, and then end over. G7. Um, let me just go over that one more time just because that was a mouthful. So the entire progression would be C7, A7, D7, G7, and then um, C7, F7, C7, G7. But we're just gonna um, use that first part. So just the chords C7, A7, D7, and then G7. And for those of you guys that are new um, with making or making chords with open E, I would just focus on um, using the sixth string root for now. I mean, you can learn the um, fifth string root, but I think I might save that for another video, or I, I think there's another video in the past I've made that um, I've gone over how to make these uh, various chords in open E. So, but anyways, that's our first chord. So. Um, let's talk about soloing ideas. So, like um, all blues, blues is uh, polymodal, which means that um, normally the harmony and the melody, um, you know, coexist in a way that they um, ultimately relate to each other, you know. But in a blues context, they're actually treated um, independently. So a typical, you know, blues melody is based off of a minor pentatonic scale. But as we just observed, you know, we're playing a dominant chord, which has a major third in it. So right there, um, that's kind of a conflict that we accept in the blues is, you know, we can have a C7 chord and the one of the main melody notes can be E flat, so. You know, we, we can just play minor pentatonic licks over it, even though it's a really a uh, chord that has a major third with it. And we can even lay on it if we want to, because you know, what our ear has just become to accustom, um, has just become accustomed to accept that as a natural occurrence. So yeah, uh, realistically over any one of these chords, we can use major or minor, but in terms of trying to develop our own playing and, um, you know, musical personality, that's not really a good way to go about it. Maybe like when you're first learning these scales and you're just trying to get used to the roadmap of them, uh, you know, that's, you have to start somewhere and like, you know, it's good maybe just to uh, do a one is all approach then. But, you know, as we're developing, we kind of want to get a little bit more specific with what we want to do. Um, so what I propose is we 
treat each chord. Um, first, we look at each chord and we look at the um, common tones along with the harmony that's being uh, the main harmony in the um, blues. So, first off, let's start uh, start with our C seven. So, C seven that has the notes C, E, which is our major third. C would be our root, of course. G, which is our fifth, and then B flat, which is our flat seven. So. What I propose, you know, to start with um, is play major pentatonic licks over your um, one chord. Because when it comes down to it, it's a major chord or a dominant chord with, you know, a major third, whatever you want to say. So I'm going to choose in this case just to play the major pentatonic over it. So if we have a C7 chord. When you're messing around with this stuff, I would recommend just playing the chord before and then just to uh, prepare your ear for the sound and what you're going for. And then what we're going to do is we're um, going to alternate the type of um, blue scale or the pentatonic scale we're going to use over each chord. So over the A7 we're going to do minor pentatonic ideas. So. Now the idea is since you know this chord is a secondary dominant and it's technically a five chord that is um, being used to set up the next chord which is D7, I'm going to lean a little bit darker on the um, scale spectrum and lean more towards minor. Um, just to, you know, just change up the brightness or, um, yeah, the brightness level a little bit. So what we have so far is C7. So we're gonna have D7 and right there we're gonna use major pentatonic. So let's hear what that would sound like in um, real time. So the chords are going to pass by fairly quickly. I only did them for two beats each, but um, I'm going to try and highlight the chords that definitely belong to minor and major. So here we go. I'm just going to let it pass by once. I was just doing major pentatonic over the one, minor over the A7, um, major over the two, and then minor over the five. And then you could experiment um, with different orders of that, different permutations, do the minor over the one chord, the major over the six chord, and you know, just see what lines up. Some of the notes are gonna work better um, than others and you know I could dig in a little bit deeper theoretically why that is but um, I'm gonna leave that to you guys to explore on your own so um, anyways I hope that lesson was helpful I hope that made sense um, of course just leave a comment um, about any questions you have um, anything else you want me to go over in the future 
Um, and yeah, subscribe to my newsletter on my website. Uh, continue to um, follow my web pages, my social media pages and whatnot. And I will see you guys next week. Take it easy.